One of my coaches, the first time I met, then we, you know, we had to do a timeline of kind of my life and things like that, and and like he just sat there and cried. Mostly winter time, um, I sleep on the concrete floor, sleep around the parks, tower block just around the corner there. I used to sleep on the staircases there. I was involved in a gang um, when I was 13. It was the only place that that I felt protected. I felt safe. About 10 years ago, my flatmate's younger brother was um, stabbed in a street incident. Was murdered and that was the catalyst of why I got involved in the first place. So my sort of go to the moon moment was, could we come up with a long-term program that could guarantee social mobility, which seemed to me a major issue of the time. I think I was there right from the start, actually. Uh, and it came at a time when we were thinking about not just schools as bricks and mortar, but part of the challenge was how do we engage with young people and improve the life chances of young people. So they were just really interested in innovation in education and development. They understood that you have to do a lot of very deep mindset change work to have any sustainable change. What happens to everybody in my area I, as young girls is you just kind of get pregnant and end up on, on benefits. So what happened to my mum? What happened to all of my friends? I knew I didn't want that life, but I felt like the odds were against me. We wanted more than just uh, skin deep corporate social responsibility, we wanted to get some meaningful results. So we run workshops, things like stress management, time management, uh, building good relationships, how to influence others, how to make good decisions. Then we also do coaching, which is a longer term thing. And the students love it because they actually get focused one-on-one -on -one time. London is unique because there are so many organisations and there are so many young people. So getting that fit right, I think, was critical to us. There was a geographical link. It's important for us, we work in communities, we build schools and hospitals and bridges and roads. We wanted to work within some of the, geographically within the communities we work. I couldn't ring home, I couldn't speak to my mum, I couldn't speak to my dad, and uh, I didn't know who to turn to for help, really. Thankfully, rival education came along at the time they did. It was quite a welcome distraction, really, because, you know, having to sleep rough in the night and then clean up as best as I could and then the next morning I'm in, uh, in the city. So that motivated me to, to want to uh, stay committed to rival education. We looked to get 26 out of year 10 of the most influential young people. And the benefit of that is if we can shift the way that they think and they behave, as natural leaders in that community, you can have massive uh, ripple effect across the school in terms of changing uh, culture. Completely changed my life, my grades, before. When you grow up and you're surrounded by that kind of mentality where you know you have to go and, and beg the, the shop to, to give your family food and you have to go into school and, and see the teacher's not really that bothered about the fact that you haven't been at home for three days or the fact that you know you don't have your school books because you know your sister beat you up and threw you out of the house at three o'clock in the morning. You know, in my school anyway, they didn't want to support me through that. But you know, through arrival I managed to get that support elsewhere and it really did change my life. My uh, mentor from Skanska, he, uh, he had absolutely no idea where to begin. But um, over time, I warmed to him, he warmed to me through our interactions. Um, I mean, he introduced me to reading about um, architectural books, you know, things that actually connected with the things that I wanted to do in my life, which no one had never really uh, done for me before, not even my dad. I remember the first time I sat down with Dan and Ibrahim and Salim. At the end of the day, I'd had a really, really tough day, back-to-back -back meetings, kind of looking in your diary, what, what is this going to be? And it was astonishing. So Scan School is a really good fit because, I guess for two reasons, one of which is a construction firm, and a lot of the young boys in particular, and girls actually, really want to engage with that. And also, uh, Scanser is a sort of organisation that seems to have its ethics as a heart of its culture. They really invest in long-term relationships and that seems important to them. I think Skanska has strong values. I mean, we have uh, health and safety, we have green, we have ethics. They're three of the core values for us. Some of the stuff we do is quite abstract, you know, financial models and funding agreements, and but actually we are delivering a product which happens to be something in their community or something 
person they drive over. When I first got involved with, with Scants, I'd never really had any kind of one-on-one -on -one help, especially from somebody that is completely different, had a completely different experience of, of life and from a completely different area. I think it's amazing that they're actually reaching out to these communities that no one else really is looking at. I think it makes us think more about the communities and the people that we engage with. I think it provides just a different kind of perspective on the world. We talk about diversity a lot when we're recruiting and it's an important issue for Skanska, diversity and inclusion. Um, these are communities that not many of us know and I think it opens your eyes and makes you really think about what's important. Things are really, really much better now. <laughs> um, not just um, academically but also you know, in my personal life as well. The way that I, I can handle situations is much better and, and I assess things before I kind of jump in. I'm not that kind of quick-tempered, angry person anymore. I am now working at Arrival Education, uh, developing some of the younger students coming through the programme and it's, it's just fascinating to see that as there, was, there was a point in time where you, you were that young person and then that same message that you, uh, you were being delivered, you're actually delivering it now and every time I think about that, it blows my mind. Actually for a lot of our young people, the real value is an adult who really wants to listen, who's not going to be judgmental and is going to help the young person find their own voice. When I look at the Skanska feedback from my students, that's really the feedback that they give. It sort of captures who they are a little bit. You know, they work in so many different places globally. If they didn't challenge what they felt about new and diversity, they, I think they would ultimately struggle to work in the communities that they're working. I think if, if I didn't have the opportunities for arrival, I could have ended up you know, either in jail or I would say having a child and being in a kind of hostel slash council flat. Well, I'd probably be, be in prison and the worst case scenario, I'd probably be dead. You know, without it, it would have been a completely different life and a, a life that I'm so happy I don't have. It's not even that they're going to be okay. They're going to be really successful, which is amazing. And that's done in partnership between Skanska and us. Yeah.